Hello, tired parents! Welcome to Ask Susanna Round 2. Before I get started with answering your questions, I have a couple of announcements to make. The first is that I got some feedback that my 30 minute long video was too long. And I tend to agree. Now the last thing I want to do is to bury some important advice inside a too long video that no one is going to watch. So I'm considering an alternative way of interacting with you parents that might solve the problem. From now on, after this Ask Susanna, Ask Susanna posts are going to be considerably shorter, about five to eight minutes long, and I'll only be answering one question. So instead, to not leave you in the lurch, I'm thinking about starting an online class where you enroll in the class and we meet online to discuss uh, any questions that you may have. I'm thinking that these classes could be focused on one particular topic so that we can go in depth on that topic and everybody in the class will get something out of it because everyone will be facing the same kind of concern. Incidentally, the th this Ask Susanna is topic-based, so it can kind of give you a chance to see what that would be like, and you can get a sense of all the different angles that, uh, that you can take when you're dealing with a seemingly simple or one-sided sleep issue. Uh, if this is something that interests you, me running a class, please comment below uh, or send me a private message and if I get enough interest on the idea then I will go ahead and set that up. That's the first announcement. The second announcement is to ask you to please comment or please write your questions under the main post for Ask Susanna. So when I put out my prompt asking for questions on Wednesday, please comment under my business Facebook account post, not any ones that I've shared through my personal account, and please comment under my Instagram post, not under any questions that have, or any um, posts that have been regrammed. The reason for this is because once the notification gets pushed down on my feed, it's really hard for me to find those questions again. I have to do a fair amount of digging, and I'd rather just see your questions all in one spot, so please remember to post there. All right, let's get started. The first question is from Taryn, who says, It takes my child at least an hour and a half to fall asleep each night. She is almost three. Does this, does this mean that nap time should become a thing of the past? And as I commented directly below her question, no, no, please don't cut out your child's nap. That is very unlikely to be the problem. Um, most children need naps until they are about four years old, and many up till age five. And even at age five, children should be offered the opportunity to rest, so nap time becomes quiet time. If, you're if your child is napping during quiet time, then they need their nap. And I'm of the opinion that even adults should be given quiet time or nap time in the afternoon, because our biology is rigged to nap at that time. Um, and everybody knows this experience of after lunch in the early afternoon feeling really sleepy. And that's because with a healthily regulated circadian rhythm, it is natural to feel a dip in energy at that time. It is siesta time. We are supposed to rest in the early afternoon. Young children need more sleep than adults. The reason for this isn't totally certain, but it is known that they do need more sleep. But the sleep research indicates that children have a greater need for REM sleep than adults. REM sleep is the cycle of our sleep in which our brains consolidate learning. And since small children are learning way more than we adults are, it makes sense that they need more of this kind of sleep. Now, REM sleep occurs in the later stages of the night. So in the earlier stages of the night, you will see longer stretches of deep sleep patterns, 
and in deep sleep we are our bodies are healing our uh, tissues are regrowing and that kind of thing and um, during REM as I said REM sleep is when our um, learning is consolidated it sort of clears out our brains and that occurs towards the end of our sleep the National Sleep Foundation which is one of the biggest authorities on sleep science in North America recommends that toddlers aged 1 through 2 should get about 11 to 14 hours of sleep per day. And this is including naps. Preschoolers ages 3 through 5 should get about 10 to 13 hours per day. And I'm of the opinion that this is actually a low estimate. I think that in our um, society we undervalue sleep and um, this can emerge even in scientific research the way that it is assessed. Now, I haven't done the research myself, this is just my opinion. I think everybody needs a little bit more sleep. In, I think that in our natural habitat, which is one that does not include artificial lights and screens and TVs and all the electronic stimulation that we are so accustomed to, um, I believe that we would be sleeping much more than we are today. But I can compromise with the National Sleep Association, or Foundation, part of me, um, and, and I like to land on the high end of that range. So, Taryn, let's say your almost three-year-old needs 13 hours of sleep every day. What time does she fall asleep? What time does she wake up? How long are her naps and at what time? If you keep track of her sleep-wake cycle for at least three days, you should get a good estimation of how close she is to this ideal of 13 hours in a 24-hour period. If she is under that ideal, then absolutely do not cut out her nap. Chances are she has a surplus of cortisol in her system, which is the, uh, the stress hormone that keeps us awake and gives us, uh, makes us alert enough to deal with whatever threat it is that our bodies are perceiving, which in this case would be a lack of sleep. It's a threat to our bodies. Makes us not be able to sleep, I know. So with this excess cortisol, the, uh, the sleep window that she may be having in the evening will be extra short. And if you miss the sleep window, then it results in this cortisol, another cortisol boost because of being overtiredness. And that accounts for the hour and a half of wakefulness that you're seeing in the evening. Because in this state of cortisol, it is impossible to sleep. If this has been going on for quite some time, then her circadian rhythm has learned to expect a delayed bedtime. And this makes it a little bit trickier to tackle, but not impossible. So I would start by encouraging the production of melatonin in the evenings. Melatonin is the sleep hormone that makes us sleepy in the evening. And I would encourage it by shifting your home into evening mode starting around 6 p.m. Evening mode is like night mode, but not quite. It's a transition into the night. So what you'll want to do is start to dim the lights in your home, turn off any screens or televisions, make everything quite calm, make sure your energy is calm. You want to commu co communicate to your child verbally and non-verbally that everybody is starting to get ready for bed. It's a winding down time. You can al allow for one last hurrah of play if you think that you're going to end up with a, a big resistance to not having a hurrah and there's nothing wrong with a hurrah as long as it doesn't energize her too much. But then you need to lay down the law. Um, bedtime is coming and it's time to wind down. You're gonna to wanna to aim for her to be in bed, you know, ready to sleep around 7 to 7.30 p.m. And um, yeah, so you, and you're gonna to want to expect resistance to this change, because like I said, if her circadian rhythm has learned that bedtime is late, then her insides are telling her, stay awake. And it can take a few days to retrain the circadian rhythm. So you have to be patient and be consistent during this change. Now, if she is getting 13 hours or more of sleep per day, then perhaps the bedtime that she is aiming for is the one that her body requires right now. If you don't suspect a cortisol boost in the evening, then it's possible that bedtime is just too early. The one that you have set is too early. 
Children around your daughter's age average about 10.5 hours of sleep per night. And finally, it could be an emotional issue. Um, consider her day and the recent life experiences that she's had. Consider how much bonding time she gets with you in the day and before bed. Could something be on her mind? Does she need more connection time? I'm an advocate of seeing behavior as a message, so I ask you to frame it that way. What is she getting out of these late nights? If it's a manic cortisol party, then what she needs is to increase her overall sleep and the opportunity to ride to sleep on an uninterrupted flow of melatonin and catch up with her sleep debt, reduce the cortisol. But if it's these other things, then they will need to be addressed in their own way. These other things being the emotional um, aspect or perhaps the timing is too early. Now, other parents that have been asking me questions about delaying bedtime tactics, I've got um, another question here from Jessica who says, Hey friend, and that's because we know each other. Hi Jessica. My son is going to bed at 11 p.m. all of a sudden. I have tried turning off all devices, bath time, lavender, story time, but he gets this burst of energy around 9 p.m. Help! And then I ask what time is bedtime, and Jessica says around 9 p.m. at the latest. He's three years old. So again, for Jessica, I would ask you to examine the overall amount of sleep that your son is getting in a 24-hour period and move bedtime earlier. The burst you're seeing at 9 is almost certainly cortisol-related. The same advice applies um, to you as to Taryn, which is to have dim, quiet energy in the evenings about an hour before you want him to actually go to sleep, although with, a, with such a late bedtime... Um, well, I'll get there in a second. So, quiet, dim energies in the evening. You can offer a little bit of negotiation with him to allow for perhaps one last play or another activity that he wants before the wind-down period is going to start. But ultimately, a firm message that bedtime is bedtime. Now, this, if this has been an ongoing issue with your son, um, as in he's been going to bed uh, around 9 p.m. for a long time, then you'll need to shift his bedtime earlier in small increments, no more than 15 to 20 minutes. Again, this is an issue of circadian rhythm. His circadian rhythm is set to not fall asleep until later. His body is used to that, and it takes some time to adjust. And if you were to, to adjust it too extreme, you might, you're, the bigger the jump that you're trying to make, so let's say you want him to suddenly go to bed at 6 o'clock, which is early, too early anyways, but let's just say, the bigger the jump, the more resistance you're going to come up against from him. And that will either lead to a power struggle, or you may be caving in, and either way, y you lose. You don't want to have a power struggle at bedtime because that just stresses everybody out, and you can't sleep when you're stressed. So, gentle nudging in the right direction, um, bedtime is bedtime, a little bit of negotiation, dim all the lights to allow his melatonin production to uh, occur uninhibited. Um, now, I've got another question about delaying bedtime tactics from Laura, who writes, Hi! While I'm pretty sure that my two-and-a-half-year-old gets enough sleep, one-and-a-half to two-hour nap, eleven or occasionally twelve hours at night, falling asleep always takes forever. We co-sleep, and I don't really want to change that, and I lay with him, usually nursing, while he falls asleep. He is very creative with his staying up antics. Multiple trips to the potty, or just trying to roll around forever, ask me questions, etc. While I can confidently and consistently manage the rolling around and talking, no response or calmly laying him back down, etc., I really struggle with the potty tactic. I waffle between trying not to take him and taking him, and he almost always does actually need to pee or sometimes poo, and then when we go. Of course, the longer we lay in bed, the more likely he'll need to pee again. Our bedtime routine is very consistent. Bath, teeth, potty, PJs, one book, good night to daddy. But it seems like a long, drawn-out falling asleep has become part of the routine. Without moving him to his own bed or making him fall asleep on his own, any ideas for a faster falling asleep process? Thank you. And then she adds that the handful of times that we've skipped his nap, he fell asleep in three to five minutes. Great. Um, I love the bedtime routine that you've set up with your son, Lauren. That's, um, that Laura, pardon me, that's great. Um, 
Now, your problem is unique because you're co-sleeping, and it makes it a little bit trickier to be consistent, and consistency is key when we're making changes to our children's um, habits. In order to handle the potty requests, I see two strategies for you to employ. Indulge him or deny him consistently. If you're going to deny him, then he'll need to be in diapers. So perhaps that's not the answer. I don't know where you are in your potty training and maybe that will derail things or make him unconfident or whatever. If you're going to indulge him, then you need to do it consistently. So be as boring as you are for all his other requests. Don't waffle, don't argue, don't even sigh. Um, part of the game is getting a reaction out of you. So if you remove that part of the game where you play along, it should be enough, should be boring enough for him to eventually drop it. Again, this is going to take a few days, especially if you've waffled in the past on this issue. He's going to want to test to see if you might do it again. Now, to address the skipping nap part of your post, Again, as for Taryn, please don't be tempted to drop his nap. The reason he is falling asleep so quickly when he hasn't napped is because his sleep pressure is high. I talk a lot about melatonin because it is a beautiful part of sleep. Melatonin is the sandman. It makes us dozy in the evening dimness. But sleep is also driven by something called homeostatic pressure or sleep pressure or simply tiredness. And I want you to note the difference between tiredness and sleepiness. After early infancy, sleep that is brought on entirely by tiredness, as in you just can't stay awake any longer, isn't as restorative as calm, melatonin-driven sleep. So it might be tempting to drop his nap, and it might work for a while, but chances are, with a child his age, if you are to drop his naps long term, it will backfire on you. Overtiredness will cause an excess of cortisol, which can result in even more bedtime resistance, and this time potentially anxious bedtime resistance, and early mornings. So instead, you may want to consider what time he goes to bed. At nearly three, his sleep needs are an hour or so less than at two. A later bedtime may add enough sleep pressure that he's less tempted to fight the melatonin for a little bit more fun with mom. And on that note, perhaps you can build into his routine some gentle fun time with mom. Basically, if you are to read his behavior as a cue for his needs, and you adjust your routine to meet him somewhere in the middle, you can put him down, in his, you can put him down when he is tired and sleepy and emotionally satisfied. But again, don't make bedtime later if he is on the shorter end of the recommended sleep hours. As you say, he doesn't seem to be, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, but just to reiterate that if this is a cortisol-related bedtime delay, then you'll be going in the wrong direction. If it's a developmental, I'm not tired and I'm not sleepy delay, then pushing back bedtime is appropriate. And finally, um, Emerald R. Nitz asks, My two-year-old takes an hour to fall asleep at night, with us running up and down the stairs five times to get her water or change a diaper or whatever. She has a good bedtime routine and goes down at 7.30 p.m. She naps two hours or so from 1 to 3, but she doesn't fall asleep until 8.30 and wakes up at 5.30 or 6. Is there any way to get her to fall asleep easier at night and stay asleep a little longer? Yes, there are ways to get her to fall asleep easier at night and stay asleep longer in the morning. You're going to need to tackle two things, her sleep hormones and her bedtime delaying tactics. Bedtime delaying tactics are used for all kinds of reasons. If your child is doing this because she misses you, then you must give her the attention and connection that she needs. Inject extra one-on-one -on -one time into your day. Make it ritualistic and predictable. Talk about it when you're not doing it. Have opening and closing ceremonies to this time. It doesn't need to be a long one-on-one -on -one time. Five minutes to 20 minutes, somewhere in there is, is fine. But it needs to be focused, attentive, and fun. If your child is resisting sleep because she isn't sleepy and she doesn't feel like lying in her bed for an hour by herself, then chances are it's a matter of excess cortisol in her system. And based on the numbers that you've given me, your child is getting about two hours of sleep fewer per day than what is ideal. In order to target excess cortisol, you need to figure out how to help her get it out of her system 
and you need to figure out how to keep it from building up again. The best way to reduce cortisol is by crying. Cortisol literally comes out in our tears. I'm not suggesting that you let her cry, but rather that you encourage her to cry. And you do this by setting limits and then supporting her through her reaction. The things that she is demanding are needs, so you must meet her needs, but they are also delaying tactics, and those can be denied. So first, anticipate all of her asks. If she wants water, and this toy, and that toy, and everything else, have all of that lined up and ready to go before you go into her room for the night. So you'll have a sippy cup of water beside her bed, all of her favorite stuffed animals that you, you give her at bedtime anyways, or whatever it is, all ready to go. Communicate with her that, you ha that she has all of these things and she's not going to be getting any more. If she wants something else, now is the time to tell you, because after now, you will no longer be honoring her requests. So for example, if you have a bedtime routine that goes bath and then pajamas and then bed, sometime in the pajamas time, give her an opportunity to ask for things. Let her know that that time is ending, and once it's ended, no longer honor her requests, like you said to her. And she might get upset, and this is good. Boundaries are healthy. Parents demonstrating that they have limitations in terms of how far they are, the far they are willing to go to please somebody is healthy. Her reaction is also healthy. This is all good stuff. Sit with her while she is upset. Validate her feelings. Give her words to express why she is upset. She is disappointed that she isn't getting her way. She's mad at you for denying her. And then hold her while she cries. Once the tears are out of her, her cortisol levels will be down and her body can relax. Reaffirm this strategy with her throughout the day the next day. Remind her that you won't be honoring her requests after the time. Remind her that she got upset when you denied her last night and that's okay, but you won't be changing your mind just because she's upset. Remind her that all her needs are being cared for and tell her that you love her. Then, at bedtime the next night, do it again. Anticipate her asks, give her a chance for more asks, and then when the time is up, deny further requests. But keep the cuddles coming, at least for now. Cuddles can become another delaying tactic, and it can be a little bit tricky because that's also a need. But... If you are giving her enough love fill-ups in the daytime and as part of your bedtime routine and you're clearly communicating the limitations to the bedtime routine and consistently reinforcing that with your behavior, you can sort of intuitively sense when that those cuddles go from I need cuddles, I'm sad, and maybe I can stretch this out a little bit longer if I ask for cuddles. It's a It's a... It can be a difficult thing to identify, but that's what you're going to be looking for if that comes up. And if you are consistent with your approach to this, then again, these delaying tactics will fade as well. And that's it for Ask Susanna Round 2. Thanks for watching the video. Um, please remember to let me know if you're interested in my online class idea. I comment below. Uh, with any feedback that you have on these posts. I love hearing what you think, and have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye!